Welcome to JN Aquarium. Today we're doing a fish room tour of our fish room. We've never done it yet. Stay tuned and you'll see what we got going on in our little hobbyist fish room. So we're going to start upstairs. This is a 65 gallon tall. This is our new colony of 10 red rainbow trophies. They're not quite as nice as I thought they were going to be. Um, I'm hoping they color up a bit more. I've been told they're wild caught. I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know for sure. So they're just red rainbow trophies, but they're uh, settling in quite nice. There is plants on top of the tank. There's some pothos in the tank and the whole thing is run by a Marineland 360 canister filter. There is one up here in the, hope your fins get better, uh, jail cell. She looks like she got beat on a little bit. So we're just giving her some time to heal up. But they are beautiful fish and a welcome addition to our dining room upstairs. Beside the dining room is a mess. Beside them is this mess right here. This is Petey, our map turtle. Everybody's seen a video of Petey already. But uh, there's Petey and this is situated in our dining room. We also have one lonely blue glow Daniel in this tank, this little five gallon glow tank. It doesn't uh, look that great on camera, but it looks pretty neat in person. But there's old Blue flying around. He's a couple years old now. And this is it for the tanks upstairs, off to the basement. So this is what you see when you enter our basement. Got a few rocks here. We've expanded quite a bit. Got some creature comforts down here. We got YouTube, we got everything. So the place is a wreck right now. We've had a ton of new stuff going on here. You can see all the buckets out under the table. We don't stack them in to each other because we want them to dry out overnight uh, in case there is anything to spread from tank to tank. Uh, that your chances of it spreading after you've let the buckets dry out is minimal so that's why we do that it makes a bit of a mess but it's way better um, so this is what you see so right here as you come in we have a 30 gallon tank with a trio of blue phantom plecos nothing special as far as a tank just a sponge filter a heater and an air bubbler. I do have a big water mover here, a uh, wave maker, but I don't run it. It's too powerful for this tank. But they are gorgeous fish and we're just growing them out and seeing what happens. Our water here is extremely hard, so I do a lot of messing around with this water. It gets pretty much RO water. Um, I've gotten the pH down to seven. I need to get it down a bit lower than that. Uh, but we've uh, put some additions of some water lettuce in here and whatnot. This tank stays very healthy, gets enough water changes, and uh, yeah, it's just working out for us here. Just let them keep on growing out. Decided is our messiest tank out of them all. And this is our Pleco Broo tank. There is a lot of fish in here, a lot. And what you see, there's twice as many as what you see underneath the filters, eating our homemade food on the glass, around, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. There they are in the filter intake. But this is a 90 gallon tank. It's got two AquaClear 70s on it, plus three big sponge filters and it gets a water change every two days, about 40%. And while we're over here, we'll talk about this. We've upgraded an air pump. We have a Gemco air pump, and I have 70 linear feet 
of one inch uh, ABS. Sorry, not ABS, PVC. And I got a set of manifolds there. I've done it a complete loop system. Goes up there, stops off here, a whole bunch of manifolds there. And this one you see right there, that is uh, the return line just to create the constant loop. And it comes right across, makes a turn across the ceiling, and comes in over here and then loops back. So what we've been able to accomplish with this is have even airflow for all the tanks down here to be run off the of sponge filters. And behind that wall, there's another 55 gallon tank that's run off of sponge filters as well. So coming back to the 90 gallon, this is our bread and butter. We have long fin, uh, albino and brown uh, ancestress. We have short fin brown and albino ancestress. We have some young green dragon ancestress in here. Um, so yeah, we, we have quite a few fish in here. And uh, if there's anything that helps us pay for our hobby, it's this tank. Now directly beside it, we have a 65 gallon tall multifascius tank. See all our multis in here. Um, this was, uh, we showed you this tank when we did a, the revamp on it, and this is how much it's matured since then. Look at all those little babies. There's probably 30 or 40 of them when you feed them and see them all come out. Tons of little babies over here. This is like the nursery over here. And I like to keep some algae on those shelves. Gives them, I think the food helps get stuck in near their shells and they have uh, food more consistently. And they probably peck away at uh, the biofilm and whatnot that gets stuck in it. Anyways, this tank is uh, not very photogenic for videos with that light on, but it does produce a lot of algae. There is three bristlenose uh, young ones in here. Um, and they can hardly keep up. There's one on the line right there. But uh, they've got lots to eat. Another one down there, and there's one more somewhere. Underneath that tank, I have about a 25 to 30 gallon. I've never really measured it. Uh, this is my long fin ancestors breeding tank. Just got a couple of caves, a DIY background, rock background. I don't put a whole lot of caves in here because they've pretty much made up their mind what they like. And it's those two caves. There's two males and two females, and they breed fairly consistently in there. Beside them, on the ground, newly set up, is a short fin brown, and there is an albino female in there as well. A 20 gallon long breeding group. A little murky still, we just set it up been cycling a long time there's one of the males give them a few caves to choose from and I'm sure we'll have some uh, babies out of there in no time above that we have a 35 gallon tank this houses four barbs they're coming back to health um, we've had a lot of issues with illnesses in this fish room lately one was ick and that was this tank and that's why it's got everything's blue. I did my old fashioned ick cure on it and uh, it seemed to work. Uh, the fish came from Big Owls in Toronto. I don't mind saying uh, they came with ick. You go to any fish store, you got a chance of getting something and it was at least contained to this tank. I didn't quarantine them because I knew they were just going in this tank with themselves. So. Uh, you're gonna buy fish from people, quarantine them. Nobody knows what they have half the time. So on the top rack here, we have nothing in this tank, just cycling some filters and it's ready if we need it. In here, we have a whole bunch of green dragon fry. They seem to be doing good in there. I know there's probably 30 or 40 of them in there. I'm not sure how many, a lot. Um, and this tank here, we're cycling it with the API Amazonia substrate. Uh, it's mixed with a little bit of Samurai as well. 
but uh, this tank is still cycling out and it's just gonna get some uh, neo, neo shrimp in it and uh, we'll see how we do with them. I've moved all our remaining guppies after the Kalamana swarm episode into this tank here for now. Um, we'll see what we're gonna do with them from here. Here's another tank that's uh, being cycled for uh, some shrimp. Um, I think it's gonna be cardinias that go in this tank. Uh, pH is very low. Um, it's around six. Uh, plants are doing great. Got some water lettuce in there too. Uh, Matt and filter in the back. But uh, it's still got ammonia in it from the substrate, so it's still cycling. There's a completely cycled shrimp tank. And we have some red Rileys in there. Rileys, however people say it. Uh, there's five of them in here. There's another one there. Let me get a little close up on them. They're pretty cool looking little shrimp. But uh, they're in there and there's lots of algae for them to eat. And they seem very happy in there. This is going to be like a shrimp quarantine tank um, until we figure out where they're going. Again, just a tank that's cycled out and uh, ready to go. In here, this is where we had the blind albino erratus. He's unfortunately passed away, um, but we still have a bunch of albino erratus fry in there, again with the matten filter. And we have one more shrimp tank cycling out here. If you can't tell, we're getting ramped up on shrimp. This is a very cool tank. This is a 10 gallon uh, Neocardinia shrimp tank. Um, these are the dreamy blue shrimp in here and there's one right here. You can see. There we go, if I can hold the camera steady. Pretty cool view. So this is the Disney Lego theme tank. Uh, this is Nicole's tank and it's doing very well. I think she's got six of those dreamy blue shrimp in here and uh, it's all cycled and going well. One little sponge filter is all she needs and a uh, whole bunch of water lettuce and other plants. But uh, we're hoping this tank takes off. Everything's exactly the way it should be. Her pH is seven, GH is five, KH is one. Um, everything's just seems absolutely perfect so hopefully they're happy we do have to manipulate our water a lot to get it like that our water comes out of the top at 8.2 so a lot of RO water happens and then we remineralize just a spare 20 long so at this side of the basement here's our just this is just our general viewing tank we just like watching this tank it's a 180 gallon Malawi tank. I have Haps in there. I have Mabuna in there. I have a big old Plucko in there. This big guy just doesn't care about anybody. But uh, for everybody, there's been a lot of talk on Facebook and stuff. Everybody's knocking Erratuses. Well, guess what? In my tank, Erratuses are not the bullies. The Erratuses get out of people's way in here. Uh, Mapenga Travassis, they'll straighten an erratus up. So don't be scared of erratuses, just tank, set your tank up proper or have a big enough tank to support them. You should probably have at least a 75 gallon for them. So this tank is cool, it's supported by four filters, a Marineland 360, a big penguin bio wheel, You can see it behind all the leaves. There's an AquaClear 100 or 110, whatever they call it. And then we have the aquaponic system. And that is a huge filter as well. All this pothos lives on the waste of those fish. And there's a lot of pothos there. So this is just our cool to look at tank, but sometimes we get babies from it. And this is where they generally get raised up. We don't go out of our way to get babies out of that tank, but sometimes if we catch a female with a mouthful, we'll uh, strip her of them. And so these are uh, 
Mapenga travassis and albino erratuses in this little tank. There's a couple of plecos in there too. We got plecos everywhere. It's just about a 20 gallon tank and a sponge filter. And like I said, all our sponge filters are the central system. It's the best thing we could, we could possibly do. This tank here is a bit cloudy still. It was just set up. We had a huge issue with this tank. It used to be a planted tank. We got the Kalamana swarms and we tore it down, treated all the fish, had a veterinarian come to our house, give us proper dosages of Levemasol. Uh, everything's been treated. It's been an eight week program treating these fish and we're finally done and able to move on. So uh, we did have some fatalities, but a lot survived too. All these quarries right here survived. So Connor's getting back at her. He's got some nice bristle nose to start with and some cribs are coming from Steve Langley at the Aberry Aquarium Club this Tuesday. Well, I was gonna get a new canopy and a new light. That light's just on there for now. It's not the proper light for that tank, but this is a work in progress. We also, Connor's not uh, real tall yet. He's only 11. Uh, so we did a stand a lot lower for him so he could actually reach in and work on his own tank. And he seems to enjoy that a lot more. This is our 72 gallon bow front tank. Um, water parameters are just our top water for this tank. Um, 8.2 pH. We have red top geophagus in here, which are coming out just stunning. We have some sips, two male sips. We don't have any females. And we have seven green dragon bristlenose ancestors in here. And uh, they're breeding like crazy. They're just very young fish, but they're using our caves and doing quite well. The geos have bred quite a few times already, but uh, we haven't gotten anything from it yet. Seems like they're still practicing, haven't quite got it down. We're gonna do some more with this tank. It's a little empty now. So we're gonna fancy it up a bit. Uh, might even get some more fish in there. Don't know, but this one's gonna be a, a tank in progress. And we gotta come around the corner into the messy room and this is my 15 year old son's room and this is his 55 gallon tank and he's got a colony of red rainbows which are turning out really really nice we've just grown them out we haven't tried breeding them yet we're gonna try very soon i think they're i think they're getting there we're gonna try the mop trick putting a mop head in and see if they'll lay their eggs in that but he's on the central air system now. It's got two sponge filters. And we'll be getting rid of the AquaClear 70 there soon. He does have a couple of plecos in here as well. I've seen eggs, but I don't know if the rainbows got them or what. So uh, we'll see if they try again. Oh yeah, his rainbows are turning out very, very nice. That's it for our fish tanks. This is our little our little station with medications and foods and whatnot. We got these barrels here. We're gonna start uh, keeping water in them. I just have this one full of water now. This is wastewater, really. But uh, just if these cans do leach anything from the plastic, I'll let it leach in this water and I'll dump it out. Um, and then I think think it should be fairly safe. But I hope you enjoyed our little tour here. We've never really gone over all the tanks we have. But that's what we have just in our basement and our, our dining room. We just like our fish and uh, thought we'd show them off a little bit how, how things have progressed since we've started. Anyways, thanks for watching our video. Please subscribe. We appreciate your support and happy fish keeping.